each of the uh, different stations had its own design team and they were encouraged to embrace some of the characteristics of the different areas within which the stations sit. But at the same time, Crossrail was really keen that there would be a consistent and coherent look and feel across these stations. And that's where we came in. Our remit really was to develop a family of finishes and components that help to bring a common thread across those different station environments. The starting point for us was the engineering. You know, I, I think firstly, we really wanted to capture some of the heroic scale of these engineering spaces for the passenger. But also we took our cue from the engineering in terms of deciding which elements would be consistent line wide and uh, which would be station specific. So for example, the spaces below ground are often you know, quite similar in terms of their engineering and it really made sense that there'd be a strong a sort of line wide identity in those spaces. London has a, you know, a rich history of line wide design going back to architects such as Charles Holden, Leslie Green, and it really comes down to passenger experience. You know, at a subliminal level, passengers need to really, you know, understand when they're in a Elizabeth Line environment without necessarily looking at signage. And, you know, at a functional level, if the stations are presented in a familiar way from one station to the next, it just makes the system more intuitive and, and easier to use. This is one of five tunnel stations which actually have very similar spatial characteristics and a concept within these spaces was about trying to create calm, clutter-free environments for passengers. And one of the key moves in doing this was about taking some of those engineering elements such as lighting, furniture, signage, equipment, etc., bringing it down to low level and locating it on elements such as the totems, the platform edge screens, the escalators. And this is a, you know, a benefit in terms of First of all, decluttering the spaces, but also for the operation of the stations, it actually keeps these shorter life elements, you know, at low level where it's easier to maintain and upgrade these over time. And, um, you know, maybe taking the escalators behind us is a good example of this. By providing all the lighting you need within that space at low level, it means you can maintain um, that lighting without having to erect scaffolding and, you know, um, creating huge disruption. There was a huge amount of effort actually working with the tunnel engineering team, the different station teams to try and standardize the geometry of all the tunnels. And really this brings an economy of scale. It means that things like cladding panels, you know, we can actually reuse molds, you know, and the more panels you can get out of a mold, the cheaper it becomes. But also, you know, by adopting a consistent cladding grid through the different spaces as well, it means all of the equipment that uh, interfaces with the cladding, such as signage, that again gets standardized and that brings you know real benefits not just in terms of construction but also future maintenance. One of the benefits of the sprayed concrete lining engineering is it's allowed us to create these very you know curvaceous transitions between the different tunnels and this is a real benefit actually for the passenger in that it really opens up sight lines around the corners and it really reduces the chances of people colliding as they they move from one tunnel to the next and you know while it creates this distinctive language for the tunnel environments it's really come out of that desire to make the environments as safe as possible for the passengers. Prototyping is vital for a project of this scale. It's all very well you can draw and draw. It's nothing better than actually producing something full size, a product or an environment that people can actually engage with we can talk about, we can view it at a real, real scale. And that allows us to engage with people who are going to use that, whether it's Transport for London, whether it's maintenance and access engineers, or actually maybe it might even be the contractors who will finally build that. It also allows us to test things. So we can look at not only the fit and, and finish of some of the products, we can look at how the electrical services are integrated. We can look at how that's accessed, and then we can generally understand how these products go together. We can refine them, redesign, and when it goes to the manufacturer, we know that it's been tried and tested. Now, you wouldn't think that the seating needs to be tested, but we saw this as an opportunity to reassess not only the scale of the seats, but also the materials. 
and how that interacts with the customer experience. So we did a full ergonomic model. We worked with various inclusive groups. We refined things like the width of a seat, the radius of a handrail, the tactility of those finishes. We produced a lot of mock-ups and prototypes for the escalator lighting, for the totem lighting you see behind me. And we were able to test to make sure the lux levels were right, make sure the glare angles were correct. And it's those sort of things we can do early in the design phase, which will make sure that what we produce is the most cost-effective and compliant products for the stations. We had a, a specialist lighting engineer, GI uh, equation within our team. And, you know, they brought a lot of innovation to the lighting design. Transport environments can often be, you know, quite uniform, uh, often even sterile, you know, environments. And we were trying to bring different lighting characteristics to the different parts of the journey. So for instance, uh, you know, these concourse spaces, it's about, you know, indirect lighting, which is up lighting the spaces, making them feel generous and spacious, similar on the platform spaces as well. And then the cross passage spaces in between, you know, these are smaller in scale. And here we have direct lighting and you'll notice the color temperature is cooler within these spaces as well. So you get this variety between warm and cool color temperature between the lighting. And it's really about trying to provide that variety along the passenger journey. The totem concept came from a requirement for signage at the crossroads of going east or west to the platforms. And we saw this as an opportunity not only to put signage at this location, but also to gather all these other components. For example, you'll see on this totem, there's a light on the top. Just below it, there is a speaker. Below that, there could be cameras. Below that it is emergency lighting and then signage panels and even tape barriers, which you can pull across to close off the spaces. It's almost a magnet which attracts all those components which frees up and cleans the environment of the cladding. The platform edge screens are needed uh, for the ventilation strategy and also to keep passengers safe on the platforms. We saw a real opportunity here to integrate uh, a lot of the equipment such as you know, the ventilation, the lighting, the cameras, speakers, even things like the you know, real-time information for passengers, the advertising, you know, it's, it's, it's a great uh, opportunity to try and consolidate all of that equipment into you know, one hard-working service wall. And um, a huge effort went in, particularly led by the Atkins engineering team, to coordinate all of those different elements onto this one system. And you know, the benefit of that is it, what it does is it means the rest of the platform environments and the back wall in particular are left very calm and uncluttered and really create a great backdrop for the, the wayfinding signage for passengers arriving onto the platform off the trains. Our approach has been to really understand the scale of the environment. These platforms are over 250 metres long. So when someone comes out of the train, they require very different information from someone who's actually getting onto the train. So if we focus on what information people require when they're getting off, we've located the information on the back wall where you've got directional signage, and that's supplemented by the signage you just see here on my left-hand side, which you'll probably recognise from the street signage called Legible London, which you see around the city. And this enables people to understand where those ticket halls are in relationship to the station. So it's very important to people to understand which exit they've got to take. The requirements of the departing passenger, we have customer information systems above each door. Not only do they give you train information service, but they also give you a, a line map which tells you what stations are next and the interchanges in those stations. So you can have a seamless journey and plan your journey going forward to the next station. What I'm excited when it opens is actually being here, walking around the stations and seeing how people use them, seeing how they flow through the spaces, hopefully seamlessly. But also I'll be very interested to hear how it works for the staff because it's their environment and it's their place of work. And we would hope that during the whole design process over all these years, we've taken on board everyone's requirements and that it 
provides not only a great experience for the passengers, but also for the staff working in these environments as well.